All right, well, I'll give you real. We're being real. Never shut up is about being purely raw. So the time in my life where I was counted out, where I counted myself out, I was living in Park City, Utah, and I fell into a very deep depression. I had come off of uh, selling my company, uh, selling sports science, ESPN, you know, and you're kind of living in Park City, trying to feel like you're retiring and, oh my God, I made it. And, you know, the isolation that you feel uh, living in a mountain town, the cold weather, injuries, things not going right. I spiraled into a deep, deep depression and I was flat out suicidal. So much so, I had a noose tied around my neck. I was ready Whoa. to do it. And my dog, Zeppelin, came to my rescue, literally pulled on my pants, on my, on my jeans, and literally was going crazy, wouldn't leave me alone. And I, like, in my suicidal funk, like, was like, what am I doing? I literally picked up my phone, called my mom. I said, there's something wrong with me. I am, like, mentally lost. I then went through a battle. I mean, I'm telling you a battle to get out of it. I went to six different psychologists and psychiatrists, finally found my answer, finally found the way. And never since that day where I found Dr. Sendy, who uh, is actually in Virginia, he, uh, he led me down the right path. We found a solution. And I have never been depressed a day in my life from that moment forward. And I am so grateful for the angel Dr. Sendy who came down and really was able to, to demonstrate to me that depression is not about being sad. It's about the way that we are constructed as humans having thought loops. And people get caught in thought mm -hmm. loops and they can't get out of their own way. And that's why you see people who seem like they're perfectly fine, but inside their head, they're just looping and looping and looping and they try to quiet those voices. And unfortunately, look, mental health, suicide, it's a real thing. And I counted myself out and I consider it my greatest blessing and greatest victory that I went to and had to march through the valley of darkness to get where I am today. Man, what an amazing story. Talking about almost a resurrection, it seems like a sort. John, you got to give me a little more about what you went through in that moment. Like, is there an isolated moment or thought that just really can visualize for all of us what it was to be that depressed? Man, you know, the darkness is very real and it's inside all of us. It's hardwired that in the looping and looping and looping and the conversation that we're having as a society about mental health, for whatever reason, there's like this stigma to it that, oh man, you need help. You need, you do, you are not healthy mentally. If you say, my God, I suffer from mental health issues, people can look at you like, oh my God, you're, that's what's wrong with you. And therefore, something like depression, which is just a thought loop, you can't get out of your head, you don't share it with anybody. You feel embarrassed about it. So for me, it was it really all about that moment of darkness and really reaching the ultimate darkness where, my God, I want to kill myself. You don't, it, 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 for whatever reason, makes sense when it's that dark. And what I, the hope that I can give to people is, listen, there is hope. There are hotlines. There are friends. There are family. There are other people. Talk about it. You have to tell people I'm not thinking right. And I know I'm not thinking right. And I know I can't find my way out all by myself. And once you express that, then you can solve the problem. If you keep it inside, it's really a formula that can end quite badly. Yeah, man. I, I think the easiest way for people to digest mental health is to think of it as much as possible like physical health. Like you have to take steps to be healthy physically, right? You got to have some discipline in terms of what you eat. You also have to go work out. You have to go to the gym. So you got to go find resources that will strengthen you mentally, whether it's a book, whether it's a better circle of friends, whatever it is. And then when you're in there, you got to apply yourself like to your mental health. You have to be dedicated to giving yourself 
better thoughts, purer thoughts, more uplifting thoughts instead of just, all right, I'm going to sit on the couch and just get fat physically. Mentally, if you don't do anything and let this world just invade your mental space, obviously it's going to go do some damage. 